I am in Malala today at Out in the Garden Nursery with Carol. And Carol, today is the first day of a three-day kind of garden tour. So tell us about this group you're in. This group we formed is called the Cascade Nursery Trail. It's nine specialty nurseries, all small family-run nurseries. Some of the greatest nurseries in the mm -hmm. area and some of the best, best people you know. We're all in a fairly close geographical range, so it makes it great to go out and tour nursery to nursery to nursery. Ah, great. So let's see what's going to be available at your nursery this weekend. Okay. What do you got here? So we're going to start with Rogerzii Hercules. Cool. And by the name Hercules, it's big and strong. It's a wonderful shade plant, um, foliage plant. It does bloom, but you mostly grow it for the foliage. Prefers part to full shade and some summer moisture to make it really happy. And with that, it will end up to be a huge plant. Uh, and it looks great with this one next to it. They could really go together. They really could. And this is Brit Marie, Ligularia Brit Marie Crawford, which is another wonderful one. These have been a little bit more sun to make them a little deeper purple, mm -hmm. but in the heat of the summer, they really prefer some shade and moisture as well. And that can also be a three by three plant. Uh, and then this is fun because it's actually an ornamental of a well-known plant. Yeah, this is a rhubarb. It's a wonderful big plant, a typical rhubarb. If you give it lots of sun, lots of water, and lots of fertilizer, it will be gigantic. <laughs> Very nice. And then a grass, which is really nice to see with all this other texture. This is a really nice alpine lazula. It's an evergreen grass. Some people have called it the sea urchin for the garden, <laughs> and I thought that was kind of cute. Um, but it's a nice plain Jane little evergreen, but it's there all year. It's a nice contrast texture and foliage wise. Very nice. And my favorite plant, Bezia. Bezia is another wonderful shade plant. Makes a nice low mound. It's evergreen most years. Kind of depends what the winter does. Has a little white flower, but it's just a lovely texture and, and um, addition to the, the shade garden. Uh, and the last one. The last one is a big leaf begonia, begonia cool. grandis. It's one that you grow again for the foliage. It has this wonderful underside color. Oh, cool. And then it actually does have a little pink flower in the fall. Ah, so really we're in the display garden here out in the garden, which is gorgeous. So you have to take time to go through the display garden, but we're going to go on to another one of the tours and we're going to go see where William's at. Thanks, Judy. Well, I'm out here now with Pat at Secret Garden Growers. And so you have some lovely selections here. Let's just jump right in. And, and what are you highlighting on you this? You got it. Uh, this is Melianthus major, otherwise so cool. known as honeybush. It's from South Africa. It's very tropical looking, but it's root hardy to zero degrees. Uh, it's, the leaves get much bigger than this. The leaves will be three foot long. They're this beautiful glaucous blue color. Uh, the plant itself is perennial. It gets to be about six foot tall and six foot wide, so give it some space. It likes sun, otherwise it's not real fussy, and it's a beautiful, beautiful accent piece for the garden. They really are. So it's very architectural and dramatic. And the leaves smell like peanut butter. Yes, they do indeed. Mm -hmm. I've eaten a few of them, but they're not taste-worthy <laughs> not at all. <laughs> what, a, yeah, there's, what is this lovely thing? Uh, this is one of my favorite vines. It's a jasmine. I don't see it very often around here, but it performs very, very well. It's jasmine, officinale, Fiona, sunrise. Beautiful. It's got a beautiful chartreuse color. It's been very evergreen for us, even when we get down to single digits, not a leaf was scathed. Nice. It's got beautiful flowers with a typical jasmine smell. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, it likes light shade. It will take full sun. And it's not a big vigorous vine like your honeysuckles and things that just overwhelm your trellis. It only grows to about 8 to 10 feet. Nice. So it's a real nice tracery plant. Wonderful. Now I have to say this looks ginger-esque to me, but the, the foliage alone is stunning. It is stunning. Uh, I've grown this plant for many, many years. It's a Zingaber Myoga. This variety is variegated. It's called Dancing Crane. Beautiful. Uh, performs outstanding here in the Pacific Northwest. It'll make a nice small colony of about three foot stems with this beautiful variegated foliage. Uh, I found out recently that it produces little orange flowers down at the base at the soil oh. line late summer, early fall, and the buds are an Asian delicacy. They're used in all kinds of Chinese noodle dishes. They make pickles with them and salads, and they're, they're quite expensive. And after the uh, tsunami in Japan, they couldn't import oh, them yeah. anymore so so they're 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 really good to have uh, it's, it's very easy to grow i call it morning sun uh, moist soil decent soil uh, they do die back in the winter but they come back every spring faithfully and you also have a tree that you wanted to talk about too i do it's a japanese hornbeam it's a beautiful small tree it'll fit in almost any garden it can grow 20 to 30 feet but usually up here it's more like 15 to 18. It's got a nice arching habit and it's got flowers like hops that a lot of flower arrangers use. And that's, I, I love to see those when they're blooming on the tree because they really yeah. are and quite lovely. And they last lovely. a long time. Now, I adore this group of plants. So tell me quickly about what these are. Perennial impatience. 
Uh, there's a lot of them. I think we've selected the best for the Pacific Northwest. They have pretty flowers, but to me it's about the foliage. A lot of different sizes, textures, and colors. Uh, this one is called Arguda. In the typical impatience culture, bright shade, moisture. Uh, this particular one is great for a hanging basket in the shade. It'll make a big three foot spilling plant with beautiful flowers uh, all summer and all fall. And about how many varieties do you think you can sell here? How many do you have? Oh goodness, I think we have 10. Wonderful. At least 10 different Wonderful. varieties. Well, you know, you have to come out on this tour and stop by here and get some of these great plants. And now I'm gonna throw it back to you, Judy. Thanks, William. I'm at Hydrangeas Plus now with Kristen. And Kristen, this is our last stop of the day, but there's other nurseries that are on the tour, isn't That's there? right, there's nine of us. Ah, so I know you are specializing hydrangeas, so let's talk about those. Sure, I picked four of them today. Right. This is, let's start with the climber. Beautiful. This is uh, naturally blooming about this time. A little bit, uh, May is usually the right time. So this is Quell Partenesis. Cool. And it is fragrant. Uh, it is nice. It really has a nice fragrance to it. A little subtle. And it's a bee plant, which is it's great. It's a bee plant. And it takes a little while for it to get growing and blooming, but worth worth the wait. Uh, it's nice to see what you can do with it. So that's really cool. Yes, we have this big wall. <laughs> so nothing better than hydrangeas and clematis, of course. <laughs> and what else do you have? So I've got kind of got a little bit of every family. Okay. So this is a climbing hydrangea. Um, and then I've got serrata. The diidum. This is a cute little petite plant, purple or blue or pink, depending on the pH of the soil, of course, but stays small and dainty. Nice. Another early bloomer of the hydrangea family, serratas tend to bloom uh, May and June, a little bit earlier than some of the okay. old wood blooming macrophyllas. Um, afternoon shade? Afternoon okay. shade is usually best. Morning right. sun, afternoon shade, and fall color. Oh, that's really Which nice. we don't see now, but the leaves will turn red as well as the, the blooms. Oh, fun. So it is a really fun plant. Ah, and this one's going to be a little bigger. Yep, this is a little bigger. This is all summer beauty. Pretty. Uh, the big cool thing about hydrangeas now is the ones that bloom on the new wood. Nice. Yes, and so this is one of the tried and true, been around for years and years and years. And pink or blue, depending on the pH of the soil, four to five feet tall and wide. Nice, wow, yep. beautiful. Another early bloomer. Nice, nice. Get some early color. Beautiful, and then that has such beautiful um, I foliage. Know. I mean, I love blooms, but the foliage is nice. And that's really what sells this plant because it's not always blooming, mm. which is hard for hydrangeas because <laughs> they're not always blooming. <laughs> but we have lots of good pictures and some even more in the nursery are blooming a little bit early this year for us. But that's what's spectacular about this. This is Sabrina. Beautiful. Hydrangea macrophyllus Sabrina. The foliage is the very, very new foliage you can dark. see is really dark burgundy. And then it starts to get a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter, and as you go down the plant, mm -hmm. even That's lighter. Great. And then what color is the bloom? The bloom is two-tone. Two nice, nice. So it's a pink on the outside and then white on the center, uh, and a mop head. Oh, beautiful. Yes, really frilly. And so this this is a great um, kind of multi-nursery tour. Yes. And you are one of the stops. And so for more information, where can we go? We can go to the website. There's CascadeNurseryTrail.com. And each of us all have a website as well. But go to that main one and it can talk about the map that we have. We have a Google map that will take you from location to location. Cool. And we'll each have a map of everybody at our own location. Ah, perfect. Yes. And it's, so it's today, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So make sure that you get um, in your car and get to all these nurseries this weekend. Thanks so much. It's going to be lots of fun. Oh, it is. Thank you, Judy. <laughs>